Another blood red sunset and yet another moon phase and still another hundred miles to my next resting place Driving down the road eyes on the horizon Within my car I'm all alone But feeling good and feeling strong Knowing that this path I'm on brings me to myself I'm driving Hey now all, I'm Joey C. Welcome back to another episode of Spirit Sherpa. This is the show that helps and encourages you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. With me, as always, is the spirit doctor, Kelly Sparta. Hey, Kelly. Hey, Joey. This episode, we're going to be hard pressed to keep to our normal 20 to 30 minute time frame. Today, we're going to be talking about are psychic abilities actually a real thing? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So the, the fact that you're asking that question is so funny because that's actually the question that everybody asks themselves when they start to do this stuff. Mm hmm. It's that prove it stage where you have to prove to yourself that you're actually doing it and not just making this shit up. And, and then you come across these moments that prove it to you. I remember the day I proved to myself I was psychic and it was a friend of mine had cornered me. He had begged me to teach a class at the last second. And I said, I'm learning shiatsu right now. I'll, I'll teach a class about shiatsu. I was like, you know, four weeks into my program. And he's like, OK, great. Well, I hadn't taught a lot of classes yet. And so I ran out of things to say. I ran about it out of everything I knew about shiatsu in, in an hour and a half. And it was a two hour class. And I was like, oh, shit, now what? Right? And he said, well, you could do readings for everybody. Now, you know, I've been reading tarot cards since I was 12. So I was like, yeah, you know, if I had my cards, that would be one thing. But I don't have my cards. He's like, no, 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 just do do readings. You do readings all the time, you know, because we used to go to the spiritualist church together. And we he there were messages from the pulpit. And and I'd always get something additional. Additional right. for the people and I'd always give it to them a coffee clatch and he's like you you can do this and I'm like no I can't do this oh my god <laughs> I can't do this right and I finally said okay I'll do this with the understanding that everything that comes out of my mouth is probably wrong <laughs> right and they all said yeah okay nice caveat right well you know I was like I was terrified I was terrified and I, I worked my way around the room and I, I gave people information I had no right to know I literally was telling people how old their children were, what genders their children were, what their living situations were, where they were going on vacation, what was going on in their home life and, you know, describing people who had just come back into their lives after 20 years. I mean, just stuff I had no right to know. That was the day I proved to myself that I was psychic. Mm -hmm. You just you can't not believe it in that moment when you have nothing else to go on or you know when you go into the astral Kathy and I the woman I run my retreats with she said meet me at the supernal temple and we'll set up this entryway into this ritual space I'm like yeah okay and so I hop into the astral and I realize I have no freaking clue what the supernal temple is <laughs> I've never <laughs> been there I don't know how to get there and so I called my guide grandmother spider and I said you know please take me to the supernal temple and so she brought me to the supernal temple we did our setup we came back out and Kathy looks at me out of the blue and says what was with the spider in the corner <laughs> And I was like, oh, you know, I just, I didn't know how to get there. And she's like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, but you know, when she sees something that she has no way of knowing that it's there because it was a conversation I was having in my head. Right. Then, you know, you have to acknowledge that that's real. So you had that moment of recognizing for you that it was real. Is it truly just the aha moment? How does a person realize that they have psychic abilities sort of general? Well, if you have psychic abilities, you kind of know. Yeah. You know, you do. You, you, it's an ironic statement there, you isn't just, it? You've just, yeah, it is. <laughs> but, you know, that, it's just you know things that other people don't know. Mm -hmm. You know things you have no right to know. You, you just know. You will try and talk yourself out of it. You will try and rationalize it. You will try and poo-poo it. You will try and explain it away, whatever. But it's there. Yeah. And... The more you do it with people you don't know, the more you prove that you have it. 
Because with the people you know, you can say, oh, well, they must have told me some other time. Right. But with people you've just met, like that room full of people I was teaching, I had no idea who these people were. I'd never met them before. I had no point of reference for them. There was no way I could possibly have known these things. Right. That's how you find out that you actually are reading the energetics and not what's going on. And I get to imagine that from a personal blocks perspective, people need to overcome their fear of knowing as well. Fear of knowing and fear of getting it wrong. Right. Remember, I gave myself yeah. absolute permission to screw it to up. To screw it up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, it's it's that fuck it up, fuck it up hard. <laughs> you know, give yourself permission because if you don't give yourself permission to screw up, then you're going to be so afraid of getting it wrong that you're going to get in your own way. Right. Okay. What different types of psychic abilities, not just about, you know, seeing the spider in the corner or right. knowing the age of people's kids. There's different types, right? Yeah. There's all kinds of different types. In fact, I was sitting down with one of my students recently and she and I were talking about the possibility of being able to scan somebody's energy field to determine uh, what abilities they have. Mm -hmm. And I went to Wikipedia and I looked up a list of psychic abilities because I wasn't going to sit there and try and come up with it in my head. And the list was quite long. Mm -hmm. And so I looked at her, I was like, okay. This is not a doable process for a scan. And I said, we need to put these in categories. And so we started sitting down and looking at them and came up with these four categories that that really do represent four very different ways in which you may be expressing what people would refer to as psychic abilities. The categories are traveler, sensor, manipulator, and messenger. Okay. Within the categories are different types of abilities, right? So we were talking about energy healing in the last podcast, right? Yep. Energy healing falls into the sensor category because you're feeling into the body and you're getting a sense of what's going on in the body and, and in the energy field. That's where empaths are. If you're clairvoyant or clairsentient or clair anything, mm -hmm. um, psychometry, where you're feeling into the energy of an item to say whose it was, yep. aura reading, dowsing, when you're looking for water using a dowsing rod, oh, yep. retrocognition, which is, you know, looking into the past, sensing into the past, seeing what has been, telepathy. Telepathy actually crosses um, a couple of different ones, but it, telepathy is really a good one for sensing because you're feeling into what the person is sending out. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to read their mind, right? And photography, which is uh, projecting an image, uh, you know, burning an in image onto something. Well, hold on one second for that one there. Are you talking about actually burning a physical image onto something in the physical it's it's with just your thought you're you're doing it onto film is the way they usually do it but really yes. so you're creating a picture on film yeah. with just thought yeah wow what a cool ability okay sorry go ahead yeah i had never heard of it it was on wikipedia but i was right. looking at it going if i were to do that how would i do that oh it would be this way yeah right and then you know within the messenger one is what we were talking about with the guides podcast. So your channels, people who are channeling their guides, who are allowing the guides to speak through them. Divination, mm -hmm. where you're reaching into the Akashic records and reading what's happening in the future. You're bringing the message through. Automatic writing, where you're translating what your guides are telling you onto paper. Mediumship, where you're talking for dead people, mm -hmm. right? You're translating for dead people. Uh, precognition, which is you're seeing the future. That one actually crosses into another category as well. And we'll talk about that in a minute. And scrying, which also crosses categories. Okay. Depending upon how you approach it. Right? So what's scrying? Scrying is if you were to read a crystal ball. Okay. Or if you were to look into a bowl of water with a dark bottom. Yep. That's mm -hmm. scrying. Okay. Okay. Would things like reading tea leaves and stuff like that be scrying as well? Reading tea leaves would be a... a it's not technically scrying but it's similar enough similar. that you could refer to it as a type of scrying okay. with regards to precognition which you mentioned 
you also mentioned in the sensor category retrocognition, yes. which is looking into the past. Right. Precognition is looking into the future. Why are those end up in different sort of categories in that case? Yeah, well, and, and they also end up in the traveler category, too. Oh, so, okay. <laughs> because it's how you approach them. Okay. Okay. So if you're a sensor and you're looking at retrocognition, right, mm -hmm. you're going to sense into somebody's energy field the echoes of okay. their past, you're going to feel the echoes of what they have been through present in their field. And that shows up in the form of blocks. It shows up in the form of stuck energy in the field. You know, if you've been traumatized, that shows up in your energy field. Mm -hmm. And so that's retrocognition from that perspective is that you see the results of what happened and it holds within it echoes of the past. It's more how you enact that ability versus the abil the specific ability itself because you could do retrocognition where you could as you said probably when you get into the travelers where you actually go back to that point yes. to be able to see it versus just to sense that something has occurred or to be told what has occurred as, as a messenger would exactly in those cases okay exactly and and that transitions us well into the traveler mm -hmm. category so traveler category I don't know if you watch The Magicians, but Penny is a traveler in The Magicians. That is a someone who is actually teleporting. Okay. Right? He's actually moving himself. We're not talking about this in that form of traveler. We're talking about traveler in terms of sending your energy somewhere. When I do my energy scans, my spiritual diagnostic energy scans, I literally I use my traveling ability combined with my sensor ability. And so I travel from my body to yours with your permission. I enter your energy field and then I engage my sensor ability and my empath to read the field itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's a combination of two different abilities. Now, if you were to talk to me about someone that you were concerned about, and as you're talking to me about them, you think about them. So you make an energetic connection in your memory to this person. I can actually, as a traveler, follow that connection to them and tell you about what's going on with them. That's another traveler ability where you're literally traveling places. So astral projection, dream walking is a form of traveling. Remote viewing, which is to leave your body and go look at another place and describe the surroundings. The mm -hmm. government actually did a huge amount of studies on that uh, in the 60s. Yeah, I was going to say there was a whole program. on A whole program yeah. that, in, you know, Men Who Talk to Goats, the yes. movie, yep. right, is based on that. Mental projection, which is what we talked about with sending your energy out. Uh, retrocognition, which is sending your energy back in time. Yep. Precognition is also included in that. And what you do in that case is you're you're looking at the probability lines of the future and you're you're laying out the probability lines and you're seeing which one's the most likely based on how it lights up. Yep. And that's a traveler technique. The interesting thing about that one would be exactly what you said, the probability lines. Mm -hmm. So it's not the absolute. No. It, and in fact, I tell people, I said, look, you know, I, I generally don't bother reading the future because I carry the energy of change. Yes. <laughs> and so... <laughs> If you're in my purview, it's because you're changing as a person, which means that your probability lines are in constant flux, right. which means trying to read the future with me around is next to impossible. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, can I see the probability lines and look at the future? Yeah, I can. But if you're working with me, we should really not count on those. <laughs> um, and again, scrying is, is the ability to sort of read into something and then travel into it to mm -hmm. see where it takes you. And then apportation and teleportation is the whole thing like penny that's right? the physical traveling. it's the physical traveling but you know i don't know anybody who can do that but ultimately that would be the final end result of being able to really master all of those skills mm -hmm. is to bring it into the physical and then the last category is manipulators and that's not nearly as bad as it sounds. <laughs> um, <laughs> these this, are not people I would typically want to re no, no. <laughs> relate to, but this is it's not, not what you mean. emotional manipulators. These are, <laughs> these are energy manipulators, right? So telekinesis, mm -hmm. right? The ability to move something with your mind. Pyrokinesis, the ability to move fire with your mind. Hydrokinesis, water. Uh, levitation. Photography, which is what we were talking yep. about. Photography actually takes both sensor and manipulator yeah. to do it because you've, gotta, you've got to be able to feel into 
into what it is that you want to put onto the the thing and then then be able to burn it it into it. Right. Yeah. Magic itself is a manipulator skill. You have to be able to manipulate energy in order to do magic. Mm -hmm. Uh, Shape shifting. So changing Mm -hmm. how you look. And I'm particularly good at that. Okay. Funny story. Uh, Years ago, I worked for a real estate company and they asked me to do happy birthday, Mr. President, to the president of the company dressed like Marilyn Monroe. Mm -hmm. And so I could not for the life of me find a white dress. So I found a blonde wig and I found a white shirt. I had a white shirt and white pants and I pinned the shirt down and I put the little birthmark on my face and the beauty mark and, and I borrowed a piece of Marilyn Monroe's energy Mm -hmm. from the countless times I've seen her. And I, I just wore her energy. I invoked the archetype of that white dress because everybody knows the iconic white dress. Right. And I sang happy birthday, Mr. President and sat on his lap and did the whole nine yards. And when I came back out from having, you know, gotten dressed again and whatever people said, Oh my God, that was amazing. Where'd you get the white dress? Hmm. And I was like, I was not wearing a dress. And they were like, yes, you were like, no, I wasn't. (laughs) Okay. I've actually got a photo and, and this, this is where archetypal energy works. I have a photo that was taken of me years ago where I'm holding a crystal ball and it's an amethyst crystal and it's a black and white photo. And the only thing in color is the crystal ball, which is purple. And when we took the photo, I invoked the image of Eve and the apple. And I said, would you like an apple? And I leaned into the camera and offered it to him with that energy. And I swear to you, every person who looks at that photo sees an apple, despite the fact that it's the only thing in color and it's purple. <laughs> so in that case, the manipulator is not in the case of uh, shape shifting there or, or the manipulation component. It's not actually that you're changing your appearance or your thing. It's you're changing others perception of your appearance. or I'm, thing. I'm manipulating my energy mm-hmm. such that they perceive that I look different. So it's sort of like a energetic cloaking device. If exactly. You will. In magical tradition, they would be called a glamour. Okay. A glamour is sort of, it's sort of like a mask. Okay. But it's more in depth than that because you're actually embodying the energy, mm-hmm. right? And so for years I lived behind a glamour and I didn't even know it because it was so important to me that people see me as competent and perfect and confident and amazing, mm-hmm. right? And so I lived behind this glamour of this image of perfection. And I didn't realize that that's what was going on until twice in two years, I cut six inches off of my hair and no one noticed. I mean, I went from below shoulder length to like right at my chin, you know, (laughs) big change. That's a big change. It's a big change. Right. And no one noticed. And when I would ask people, I was like, did, did you not notice that I got my hair cut? They would literally squint at me (laughs) like they were trying to see me And trying to remember what my hair looked like before. And it was in those moments that I was like, oh, my God, they don't see me at all. Right. They have no idea what I actually look like (laughs) (laughs) because I have this image that I'm holding so strongly in front of me that there's no way they can see through it. The last one, I just want to hit the last one in the manipulators. Mm -hmm. The last one is time shifting. So if you've ever intended to be on time and arrived on time when there was no way you could possibly have gotten there in that time frame, you've time shifted. I, I have once driven from... Boston to the middle of New Jersey, which should take about five and a half hours. And I did it in three and a half. Hmm. Okay. That's time shifting. Can time shifting go the other way as well? Uh, My shaman swears that if you time shift, then you end up paying the price on on another time. I have not had that experience, (laughs) but yes, you, it could theoretically. I will say that I've had a personal experience before. I was driving what should have been a 30 minute drive and I actually arrived 45 minutes late. I didn't stop. I didn't pull over. I was driving my normal route. There was no traffic. How did that happen? So you're saying it took you an hour and 15? Yes. To do a 35 minute drive. Yeah. Uh, I know some people who would say that you 
had an alien alien abduction. that's exactly what i said <laughs> that was exactly that's so funny i'm like i'm like i was abducted by aliens i know i was i don't remember it but how else can i explain that because i didn't go anywhere <laughs> there would be people who would say that yes um and and could times shift in the other direction yeah i can it can't slip. In well, the other there was direction. no intention. I'll tell you that right, right. now. <laughs> so then it's the alien abduction is more likely. <laughs> well, there we go. Aren't you excited? To know uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's transition into the Ask Kelly because I do have a question for you for yeah. uh, for in the Ask Kelly section. We've just talked over the four different categories: traveler, manipulator, sensor, messenger. If a person feels that they have some of these psychic abilities and they've removed that fear block, they've removed all of those things that would stop them. How can they actually work towards improving or, or expanding upon what they can do, even if it's within a specific item that, like you had mentioned before, or to maybe more of the catalog in the in the type that they fall into? Yeah. So the short answer is practice makes perfect. You okay. know, psychic abilities are muscles like anything else. If you work them out, they get stronger. Mm -hmm. If you don't work with them, they atrophy. Okay. Right? So uh, the more you do it, the stronger you'll get. The one thing I would say is that uh, some of these skills are more dangerous than others. So, for instance, channeling is something that could be very dangerous if you're not careful. Uh, because you're you're handing over access to running your body to something else and hmm. someone else. And so, you know, if you're starting to work at a level where where there's either a physical danger or an energetic danger, then I would really highly recommend that you get trained before you practice. Yeah. Uh, you know, we talked about the guy in in one of the other episodes who was astrally traveling without setting a safe container. That can be very dangerous. Yep. You know, at the very least, read up on what you're doing to get some sense of what's going on with it and whether or not there's there's safety concerns to be had. Mm hmm. You know, read read eight or ten different websites. There's probably a good chance that if there's a safety concern, somebody's going to say something. Yeah. And then, you know, practice, practice, practice. So that's really what it comes down to for these. The interesting thing is that sensors are more kinesthetic. Okay. And messengers are often more auditory. And manipulators are more visual. Mm-hmm. And kinesthetic. Yeah. And travelers are a lot of, it's visual and kinesthetic combined as well. So depending upon your learning style and your, your default way of being, you may have more uh, naturally accessible skills from one of these categories because of that. And it's possible for people to cross over into multiple, multiple types. Oh yeah. I do all four of these. Yeah. Yeah. So not everybody does, but, mm -hmm. but many people have at least two or three. Yep. So, but in some cases people, it's not that everybody has to be able to do all four. People may have, as you said, natural sort of tendencies to be stronger in some more than others. Yes, absolutely. And, and you will be stronger in some more than others. Yeah. I mean, the reason that I can do all four of these is because I've been practicing it for 20 years. Right. Um, when I first started, I was very much a censor. Right. I had to develop all the other skills because you were a strong empath and right. that that gave you that sort of natural landing place to start. Exactly. So don't feel like you have to get into all four categories at once. Give yourself time and I would say really focus. Mm -hmm. If you take a scattershot approach, you're not going to get to the prove it stage very quickly. Because you're going to have a little bit of here and a little bit of there and a little bit of there. And well, maybe kind of sort of I can do this because you're going to all your muscles are going to be a little weak. Yeah. But if you focus and you pick one or two things to really focus on and build those muscles really strongly, you're going to be able to prove to yourself that you can do this. And that will provide you with the motivation to get really good at everything else. OK, so that would be my suggestion. Just from a, a personal journey perspective, that's also a good opportunity for them to focus on what they're feeling and seeing rather than just on the abilities, actually focus on themselves too yeah. a little bit and, and what's there underneath all of it. Because no matter what abilities a person may have, it always comes back to who they are ultimately and, and believing in themselves. Right. And 
your access to your abilities is going to be limited by those limiting beliefs that we talked about earlier. Right. If you've got a block that says, I can't own my power, I can't be trusted with my power, then you're never going to let yourself get very good at it. Yeah. Right. You know, it's just the nature of the beast. Yeah. If you're afraid that the universe is going to show you that you're going to die or somebody else is going to die, then you're never going to give yourself permission to see what you can see in the future. You yeah. know, that sort of stuff. Cool. Is there stuff that you have that will help people in this in this sense or in this space or is there anything you want to suggest to people well you know the the magical side of the mastering spiritual evolution program goes into a lot of this stuff and okay. it's you know it doesn't go in depth into it because it's it's the first level yeah but it gives you the introductory points right. to be able to understand the different pieces and parts yeah so we we do talk about a wide variety of this sort of stuff and how to access it for your own benefit you know, obviously the first two years are all about being able to do your own work and mm-hmm. do it most effectively. So what we really focus on is the messenger stuff with how do you talk to your guides and how do you get in touch with yourself and your higher self and how do you identify your own blocks and how do you really work through your own healing process and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So it's really self-focused for the yep. first couple of years. And then the second couple of years are all about being able to do stuff with others. Yep. Right. So i for others. So You know, it it is a gradual process, as it should be, Mm -hmm. right? Because you have to develop your skills and and you want to focus in order to develop the skills really effectively. Right. So if people want to check out the Mastering Spiritual Evolution uh, class, they can go to your website and get more information. But we we have talked about that in other episodes. And my guess is that we're going to talk about that in plenty of episodes (laughs) because that really ties into a lot of the work that you do as a transformational shaman. Absolutely. And the work that people can do to help drive that. And the tie-in there to the magical aspect of it, that's also there. Yeah. Well, and, you know, it's... I've spent my entire life really studying how people grow and change. This program is 10 years worth of personal growth work in a single year. In one year, yeah. So it's intense, but it's awesome. Oh, my God. (laughs) Excellent. That's all that we have time for this week. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Be sure to join next week as Kelly adds another chapter into your beginner's guide to energy, magic, and the spirit world. I'm Joey C. here with Kelly Sparta. And you have been listening to Spirit Sherpa. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one. Each mile I travel over 13,000 now, so I leave behind a little fear. Spirit Sherpa is the sole property of Kelly Sparta Enterprises and is distributed under Creative Commons BY NC ND 4.0 license. For more information about this licensing, please go to creativecommons.org. Any requests for deviations to this licensing should be sent to K E L L E at K E L L E S P A R T A dot com. That's Kelly at Kelly dot com. To sign up or to get more information on the programs, offerings, and services referenced in this episode, please go to Kelly dot com. This episode of Spirit Sherpa has been produced by Honu Voice Productions. Oh, my love and my